Now onto the other Tau worlds and settlements. In addition to the settled star systems or sets, the Tau realm is rife with all manner of spatial phenomenon. Tau made orbital structures, fortress stations, orbital cities, lesser void stations, and important alien homeworlds. There are also more sparsely populated colonies that are not accepted into the Empire as full sets. Only a few names of such colonies are known to the Imperium. I will name the most memorable. First up, Arkunasha. The planet of Arkunasha was settled during the Second Sphere expansion. Despite the aridity of the oxide deserts that made up the world's surface, the Tau had settled the Red Planet with a sizable population. This they had achieved through the tireless work of the Earth caste scientists and engineers. By their efforts, the Empire had girded the planet with two necklace-like strings of biodomes that ran around the most temperate latitudes, each a mirror distance from the equator. From orbit, the world appeared as a blood-red globe adrift in the ocean of space, banded with two rows of bioluminescent lights that pulsed bluish-white like the flanks of some deep-sea organism. In their preliminary investigations during the earliest expeditions to Arkunasha's surface, the Earth cast had made a disturbing discovery. Whilst determining the source of the oxide deserts that covered the world, they found a great variance in the metallic composition and even origin of the various particulates. It was as if the world had been entirely covered in metal structures at some time in the distant past, which had long since been utterly ground to dust. Given the depth of the oxide residue, that ancient civilization must have included several artificial cities the size of mountain ranges. Theories abounded throughout the Earth cast about the planet-wide catastrophe that had torn everything upon the planet's surface apart. Though the Tau had no idea what might have caused Arkunasha's spectacular death, or what the inhabitants might have been, they had taken their first glimpse of the world-destroying power of the Imperium's exterminator's actions. Then, Dal Eth. Before the coming of the Tau, the indigo planet of Dal Eth was a wild ecosystem of deep blue foliage and slithering, segmented beasts. It was tamed long ago during the first sphere expansion and has been brought into compliance with prime level colony standards ever since. Because of the high proportion of water cast members upon its surface, it has enjoyed extremely beneficial trade agreements and has recently been counted as one of the 19 wonders of the Tau Empire. Much of its surface is covered with a tessellating hexagonal net of cities and sub-cities, each connected to the nearest conurbations by a splaying and perfectly regular network of transit tubeways. Clean, white magna rail trains whisk the populace to and fro, detaching and picking up carriages with slingshot efficiency so that they never have to stop. Though the planet has landscaped hills and even gigantic hexagonal reservoirs dotted across it, from orbit it looks as if the Tau have settled it with the precision of an earth cast scientist modeling a new atomic phenomenon. Then Kamais. Kamais was invaded by the Tyranids High Fleet Gorgon in 902M41. A hidden Necron fleet emerged from Kamais's dead moon and destroyed the outnumbered Tyranid bioships, 
but then continue to land on it and eradicate its population to retake the world for the Necron Zone. Then Corvatra, known as the Tau Protection Fleet, and Kor Shuto, orbital cities. Incorporated into every sept are dozens of major docks for the Tau Protection Fleet. But in addition to these immense void stations, many septs have also developed vast orbital cities. These can be moved to provide stable jumping off points for large Tau research endeavors, military campaigns, or major colonization efforts. Then the Red Sun systems. Tau probes have marked the dense cluster of planets around a string of six distinct red suns. However, the massive orc population has deterred any further colonization of the region. The star systems are ringed with Tau sensor buoys in hopes of offering early warning should the green skins ever cease their internal fighting and seek to menace neighboring systems. Then, Taros. Taros was recently settled during the Third Sphere expansion. This was an imperial world that was willingly annexed by the Tau after opening commercial relations with the Xenos Empire. The resulting imperial attempt to retake the world was defeated by the Tau during what became known as the Taros Campaign. Then Tashiro. Positioned in the deep space between sets are Tau Tashiro bases, fortress stations capable of enough thrust to resist gravitic drift and maintain permanent interstellar positions. Several patterns of development have been followed in the construction of these enormous floating fortresses, with the largest comparable in population to a continent-sized city. And the Zone of Silence. A devastated region where High Fleet Gorgon left behind many barren planets scoured of all life forms. Now moving on to the non-Tau worlds. During the first sphere expansion, the homeworlds and colonies of the Crute and of the Vespid were also incorporated into the Empire. Interestingly, these star systems are not considered septs by the Tau. In addition, there are an unknown number of former Imperial worlds within the Tau Empire some or all of which might still have a human population. Now I will name the most memorable of these worlds. First, Pech. The Crude are the most common of the alien auxiliaries in service to the Tau Empire, and dozens of crude enclaves can be found among the Sets. Although they are a far-flung and migratory species, all crude eventually feel the pangs that lead them to return to their birth world, the true home of all crude kindreds, the world of Pech. There are eight star systems in the Tau Empire inhabited by them, including Pech. The Imperium knows only the name of the planet Krath, where the Tau first encountered the crude. Then, Roksh 16. Roksh 16 is the site of a secret Tau listening post. The planet was part of the Roksh system that was home to the Rokshashi Wealth Web Merchant Guild before the entire star system was consumed by the Tyranid Hive Fleet Gorgon in 689-902-M41. Then Shah Galud. Shah Galud is the homeworld of the Nagi, a small Xenos species of highly intelligent worms known for their mind control abilities. 
When first discovered by the Tau, the Nagi were hated creatures known as mind worms. But since the early violent conflict, they have agreed to a peace accord and joined the Tau Empire. Many of them now serve as valued advisors to the ethereal caste. And Vespid. Vespid is a benighted gas giant that also just happens to be the homeworld of the insectoid Vespid species. This world is also known for its rich crystal mines. The Earth cast discovered that these crystals have many intriguing technological uses. Now moving on to the artifact world. There are three so-called artifact worlds located within the borders of the Tau Empire. As the name indicates, ancient artifacts of unknown origin have been discovered on these planets. It is not known if these worlds possess established colonies. First up we have Arthas Moloch. The artifact world of Arthas Moloch is as grey and desolate as a tomb. Its surface is jumbled with thousands of tumble-down shrines and strange faceless statues that predate any of the human colony worlds of the Imperium. The world's surface is cracked and broken, giving the sense that the planet itself died long ago. An impression that is reinforced by the fact that not a single green shoot or patch of moss can be found anywhere on its surface. Not a single living soul makes a home there, though the plaster walls of the planet's tombs bear the dark brown smears of bloodshed and ghostly shadows have been burned into the walls wherever the ruins cluster closer together. Though the world is barren as bone, if one possessed of psychic abilities were to behold it with the witch side, it would shine like a gold mine in firelight. The shrine hold is peppered with artifacts of ancient mysterious origin, each a priceless wonder left discarded in the dust. Arthas Moloch is also known as a dead world to the Imperium, and it is where Commander Farsight discovered the Dawn Blade. Then Q15 and Landfall. And to finish things off, the Farsight Enclave. Although not a part of the Tau Empire, this breakaway Tau faction led by Commander Farsight is known to have settled beyond the region known as the Damocles Gulf and is named the Farsight Enclaves. These enclaves still believe in the Tauva, the philosophy of the greater good, but operate without the guidance of the Ethereals. The exact names of these fire cast led sets are unknown to the wider empire, as the armed fortress stations defending them have proven effective at destroying any probes sent to it. When sighted generations later, these forces and fleets bore markings similar in design to those used by the empire, but in colors and patterns never sanctioned by the ethereal. Like any distant Tau colony, much of the war gear, support equipment and armor used by those within the Farsight Enclaves is slightly dated. The equipment most prevalent at the time of Farsight's disappearance several Tehran centuries ago. There has been, however, unsettling evidence of classified technology and recent Tau prototypes present within the Enclaves. Time will tell. Whether this is the result of spycraft, theft, or defectors from the Empire who have been aiding those within Farsight's domain.